Egypt. My name is Rabbi Finn. We have now left Egypt. Yes, we are. This is the first week after Pesach, and I've got an amazing dish to share with you. Whisper it carefully. This is even a kosher for Pesach dish. In fact, I made it this year at Pesach. I make it every year at Pesach. I shared this in my recipe book for Pesach, but I always forget about it after Pesach, and I don't know why, because it is such a simple, beautiful, super tasty dish. It is chicken with white wine, shallots, garlic and herbs. It is super easy to make and packs a huge, huge, huge flavour punch. You are here for a brand new series of Morad and United Synagogue. Now, we are celebrating the book of Bayikra, but this has provided a conundrum. What should we call it? The first idea was Bayikra Veg, but I could hear the carnivores of Bornwood were starting to rebel at the idea. So then somebody suggested Leviticus Loaves, but I didn't feel like making bread for the next five weeks. So instead, we called it Bayikra Variety, because I'm going to be sharing with you a variety of dishes over the next few weeks, starting with this absolutely amazing one. As I said, we are in the book of Bayikra. In fact, we've missed the first two parshiot, Bayikra and Sav, so we're going to jump straight into Shemini. Shemini and this dish work perfectly together. Why? Well, for two reasons. Firstly, by the way, just so you know that's what's going on in my pan, I'm browning off the chicken. I'm making four pieces of chicken here, and I'm going to show you how to make it for four, but it's so easy to double, triple, quadruple the recipe. The only thing I should note is that, um, actually, no, just double, triple, quadruple the recipe exactly as I am doing it. So, you want to start off by seasoning and browning your chicken because you want to brown the skin in it. You also want to have your oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius. This week, Pasha Shmini tells about the consecration of the Mishkan. It's supposed to be a super happy day, and it is a super happy day. But it ends up on a low note when Nadav and Abihu, the two, two of the sons of Aharon, uh, bring a, an offering in the Mishkan uh, under interesting or dubious circumstances, depending on how you read and what uh, commentators you read, and they end up dying. Straight after that, God gives a law to the Kohanim, to the priests, that they are not allowed to be drunk, they should not drink wine, and then go and do service to God. Which leads some commentators to say that the reason Nadav and Abihu died was because they were drunk when they were offering the sacrifice. Interestingly, this has ramifications to this very day. It explains why on Simchat Torah we do bid cut God in the priestly blessing at Shacharit as opposed to where we normally do it for the rest of the year after Musaf because there is an assumption that the Kohanim might be a little bit tipsy by the time we get to Musaf, therefore get it out of the way earlier on so that they are doing it whilst completely and utterly teetotal. So that explains why we are doing a chicken in white wine. This is a chicken not for Kohanim to eat. I uh, have just before doing a temple service, although we're going to be burning off all the alcohol. The other thing that happens in this week's portion is we have a long list of animals that are kosher and non-kosher. We are taught the rubric of what makes an animal kosher or non-kosher. An animal needs to uh, chew a cud and have split hooves. We speak about birds. It, we, uh, birds of prey are non-kosher. Chicken is not a bird of prey, hence why it is kosher. Hence why we are making it today. We also speak about what fish are kosher. They need to have fins and scales. So that explains the dish. This dish is super, super simple. I want to share with you a beautiful idea about shemini in a moment, but let me just do the next step. So I've got my chicken. It is beautifully, beautifully browned. I'm now going to put it into a dish that I'm going to be cooking it in the oven for. I'm going to do the next bit. Um, just as an aside, when you put it in the dish, make sure you do it skin side up. So, because you want that beautiful skin to try and keep a little bit crispy. Uh, often I do a much bigger dish than this. Um, I'll use a big 9x9 nine nine or a 9x13 dish um, uh, because I'm serving this for guests. But obviously, this is just for me um, because it's going to be cold for Shabbos. Now, into here you can add shallots. Tip number one with shallots. Uh, to peel them really easily, put them in a bowl and pour over some freshly boiled water. Leave it to stand for about five minutes and the peel literally comes off so easily. If you don't have shallots, just uh, cut up an onion into large chunks, probably two onions, and that will do you. If the shallots are too big, like I've got a couple of really big shallots, just cut them in half, otherwise they are not going to cook in time. I love this dish, the flavour of the white wine, and you're going to see the garlic and the herbs in a moment, 
just gonna infuse into the chicken and gives it the most amazing taste and the sauce is divine. So it's my pan. Put my shallots and you want to brown your shallots off in the chicken fat that is now in the pan. At the same, you want your pan of the highest heat possible. At the same time, get four cloves of garlic. Um, if you are doubling, tripling, then at some point you want to maybe cut back a little bit of the garlic, otherwise you're gonna, well, you're definitely not gonna have any vampires coming near you. Four cloves of garlic, which I've just chopped up or sliced up into the pan, and you just want to fry it all together for a few minutes. Whilst that is frying, I'm going to tell you an amazing idea about this week's portion because this week's portion is very, very special. It contains the middle two words of the Torah. The rabbis say in the Gemara that the two middle words, because it's not one middle word, it's two middle words, appear in this week's portion. And those words are darosh darash. Moses, which is the previous word which appears before it, insistently inquired or inquired insistently asked a lot of questions about a law that God was teaching Moshe. Now little secret apparently although I to be honest I haven't counted every single word of the Torah and therefore uh, proved it myself but apparently it's not quite the middle word of the Torah. It's about there but the rabbis chose these two words and you've got to ask why. Why is it that the rabbis say that the central words of the Torah this book that is our book of our, our guidance, the book of our lives, why did they say the, the middle word is Darosh Darash, Moses insistently inquired? And the answer, I believe, is as follows, because as Jews, that is what we are supposed to do. We're not just a faith which believes in just doing. We believe also in learning. As I explained a few weeks ago, we said that our seven ish month we will do, but we will also learn, we will also listen, we will also uh, explore. As Jews, we need to explore. We need to be asking questions. We need to be going on a journey of discovery constantly throughout our lives, always asking questions, trying to understand how the world works, because only through understanding how the world works do we get to an understanding and into an appreciation of God. And so, in effect, the entire Torah pivots or the central theme or the central message or the central idea which goes right through the middle of the Torah is about inquiring, asking questions, going on a journey of intellectual discovery as part of our avodah, as part of our service of God. Now, what you want to do is fry these off. Ideally, you want a hob, which is going to be working better than my hob. My hob is seemingly taking forever to do it. So, you want a bit of colour on your shallots. Okay, so I've got some more colour now. My shallots, I had to take them to the other hole just to give them a bit of colour. Into here, I'm going to add in about 125 millilitres of white wine. Not into here, into here. And I want to let it boil and bubble away. But into that, I'm going to add in a half a tablespoon of uh, chicken stock powder. a good few grinds of pepper and then whatever herb you have around the house. So let's over from Pesach, as I said, um, uh, I made this from Pesach and I just love it. So I'm going to put in some twigs of thyme and I'm also going to throw in a few twigs of rosemary as well. If you don't have uh, both, it doesn't matter, just do one, but definitely do one. It needs either uh, thyme or rosemary, otherwise it's it's not going to be as amazing as this truly is. Give it a good mix. Make sure your um, your wine is boiling. And once you've got it all boiling, you're going to pour this into the chicken. And what you want to do is cover the chicken and bake it in an oven at 180 uh, degrees Celsius for about 45 minutes. Take the lid off and then give it a few more minutes and check that it's done. It would probably be done between somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour, depending on how big your chicken pieces are. That is how easy this dish is. This, I think, is ready to uh, pour in. I'm getting the most incredible, incredible smell. So, let's get the uh, chicken up. Simply pour this over. If I was having guests around, I would make this look really super pretty. Um, and I'll do it in a bigger dish, because then you bring it to the table and you get that ooh and ah. Uh, thing, but seeing as it's just me at home at the moment eating this, we're locked down still, kind of. Um, 
Uh, but then it's just me and I don't really care how it looks at the moment. Um, I'm going to cover this and put this in the oven and I'm going to show you the finished product at the end. Please give this a try. It's so, 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 so easy and so tasty. So here it is, my chicken with white wine sauce, garlic and rosemary and shallots. It is amazing. It smells absolutely incredible. I took it out of the oven about 20 minutes ago so it can cool down a bit because uh, I'm not eating this tonight. Uh, this is for dinner another night, but this looks incredible. I can't wait to try it. Give it a go. It's so easy, so simple, but packs a really good punch when it comes to flavour. I hope you have a great week. Shabbat shalom.